we go. So welcome again to our first New Year's uh, 2023 group body talk session. And uh, it's great to be here. And I, I'm, I hope all of you had a, an enjoyable New Year's, whatever you chose to do. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm not sure what's going to come up today as I was just talking a little bit with Body Talk. We always uh, work with the priorities. So when I'm doing a group Body Talk session, I may have uh, a focus or a theme and I often use what's happening at a macro or astrological uh, level to um, bring into the session, but it doesn't mean that uh, it's going to be limited to that because it, it does depend on you know, what um, what comes up in the session. So I will, um, we have a lot of our sort of regulars here. So thank you everyone for joining me again. And also thank you for uh, some of your feedback from the last session. I really um, am inspired by that, that, uh, that there are some, some, um, the things that come up and the balancing that comes up in these sessions um, really relates to each of you um, I, quite specifically at times. So that is uh, wonderful. And I'm sure that that's your intuition bringing you to this group. Um, Cause you know, in my Aquarian nature, <laughs> I have Aquarius rising. And so I'm very much about the, we, um, I love uh, group energy and community. Um, and, and there are, are some themes about that in the coming year. What, as I, I always tune in before the session, um, and sometimes I'll do a bit of a, a body talk matrix on the actual session, like the session itself, um, just to see what, you know, if there are some themes that seem to predominate. And Pluto is... Um, <laughs> Pluto is really busy um, this coming year. And uh, for those of you that aren't necessarily familiar with that archetypal energy, uh, Pluto is definitely a, uh, for a lot of people, it's a scary energy. It is um, because it's definitely one of transformation. Um, it is associated with the eighth astrological house and the eighth house is um, the house of death and rebirth. Uh, so that can be physical death, but it can also be you know, death to those things that are no longer uh, serving us. It often comes in a um, uh, not necessarily an easy way, um, because when we really need to uproot those things in our lives, whether there are beliefs or perspectives, or even at a physical level that actually really need to clear, um, it can be quite disruptive. So when I say Pluto is busy this coming year, um, it's uh, doing a lot of what we would refer to as transit. So sort of back and forth. Um, Right now, I'm pretty sure it's in Capricorn, and um, it's going to be moving into um, Aquarian energy, and then a little bit into Pisces, and sort of back and forth. So when we're talking about transformation, we're looking at these outer signs. And so the outer signs of Pisces, the 12th house, um, Aquarius, the 11th house, Capricorn, the 10th house, these are the outer signs are the things that impact humanity at large. So they are personal in that they have the, <laughs> they can actually impact us, but then they're also, you know, really sort of symbolizing bigger shifts and changes um, for humanity at large. And, you know, I mean, some things are, are quite, I'm, I'm just actually going to bring up, um, because I found this quite interesting. Um, the last time, um, Pluto, um, let me just see here. So yeah, so Pluto moving into Aquarius. And so, you know, one of the things that I think about is power to the people. <laughs> so when we look at Aquarian energy, Aquarius is very much about community. It's about the collective, uh, collective consciousness. It can be about altruism and, um, you know, and that moves into the 12th house as well. But when you've got 
Pluto coming in, Pluto is not only about transformation, but it's also about power and power structures. So Pluto and Capricorn, um, which is what's been happening for the last 20 years, is very much about challenging the structures that we have. Um, and moving into that Aquarian type of energy, it's like you talk about power to the people. I believe that the last time that Pluto was in Aquarius, um, uh, the like an, the French Revolution happened. Like you know, this is where people no longer accept the powers that be, and so coming together can really. It's like that sort of herd group mentality can really shift um, the structures and challenge. So Pluto is about challenging uh, structure and shifting power dynamics. Uh, so I just thought I would share that because as I was tapping into the energy of the group, um, yes, thanks, Huey, optimal health and wealth and happiness to everyone. Thank you. Um, so, you know, we talk about that, and but then it's also our personal power. And the other part of Pluto is that it's, it's a revealer. It likes to reveal. reveal. So there's another aspect. Um, I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. There's another aspect of um, we're in retrogrades right now. So Mars retrograde, um, uh, Mercury retrograde. And so retrograde time, you know, it can say that there's it's sort of wreaking havoc and we make plans and they don't happen and communication can go awry. Mars is in retrograde in Gemini and Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is also in retrograde. So there might be some things about miscommunication um, and even just travel plans, those kind of things. But also it's like, okay, so if we, you know, how do we actually take that energy right now and use that to our advantage? It, and for me, it's more of an inward time. It's like, okay, so how can I take that inside and start to, um, you know, uh, do a little reflection and editing, um, you know, what areas of my life would like to be refined and, or, you know, with Pluto energy, what areas of my life really want to be cleaned out or quite literally cut out. Um, so just some food for thought before we go into the session. Um, you know, when, when Huey wished everyone, uh, health and wealth, um, there's another transit and is Jupiter will be moving into uh, Taurus. And so Taurus is uh, the sign of the second astrological house. And that is, is it's earthy. And we actually have quite a lot of earth energy and, and water energy this coming year. And earth is our, our stability. It is our sustenance. It's, you know, in terms of like finances, it's our, our wealth, right? So it's our, you know, whether it's like wealthy or just the money that we have, our security. So Pluto tends to exaggerate anything that, any sign that it goes into or any planet that's in, in relationship with. So, uh, you know, there's a possibility of creating more stability and, but, you know, in, in sort of the broader context what my sense is as i was tapping into the group earlier is and not just the group but just the energies themselves is in perhaps a new way like is it you know how are we looking at things both individually and collectively and is it time for a shift so let's go into the session now and if you'd like to take some some deep breaths um, and get as comfortable as you can be. And I will start to, um, so I go into my Mindscape. I've talked to many of you about Mindscape before. It's a body talk course, and I, I highly recommend it. It's more than a course. It's, bit, it's also transformational um, in that it develops your capacity for accessing the intuition that you have. So I'm uh, going to go into that space and uh, invite the group in. So when I invite the group in, symbolic, uh, this symbolism that comes in is, is actually Saturn. So it's not, not what I expected. Um, Saturn as well as the sun. Um, and so, you know, the sun is in Saturn or in Capricorn. So that may have something to do with it. We are still in the sign of Capricorn. Um, 
and uh, and it does relate to structure and uh, organization um, and uh, earth and stability. It also, when I talk about structure, traditionally relates to you know power hierarchies, and and so when I'm sort of seeing this, what so actually coming up, it relates to communication. I make a note of that. Um, it relates to communication um, of uh, a shift in perception of, uh, um, of these, uh, I'm gonna call it a communication structure. So, you know, when we look at a, a hierarchy, this is a, a concept that we've all agreed to. It's a, you know, a social construct in a way um, that we've agreed to this hierarchy. Is it real? You know, it's as real as we've agreed to it to be. So therefore it really is arising from collective agreement in a way, um, but is it the truth? And, and so this is where Pluto comes in um, and challenges that perception of that agreement that we've made with each other that a hierarchy is the truth. So I'm not, I'm not saying that a hierarchy isn't true and that they don't exist, but what's coming up is, is to shift that perspective. Um, and so within that, there is uh, the, there's a, an umbrella coming in here of the 12th astrological house, which is the house of individuation. It's about removing the veils, um, starting to shift uh, to more truth, you know, to the essence of things and clearing up, up uh, masks that we put on. Um, and uh, so that's, the, that's an umbrella. And then I'm going into still staying with this overall theme of perception of structures. And so the next thing that comes up is a sphere. Um, and it's still relating to communication um, and perception in uh, challenging the triangle of hierarchy to a sphere of um, structure for um, what comes up as equanimity uh, and balance um, within power dynamics. Um, so this is both personal relationship as well as more of a macro level. And so I'm just staying with this more high end or high level philosophy and the, the visuals here. Um, and so within this is, is really a feedback loop. Um, so, when, you know, when we're looking at any of these so-called structures, especially these, um, agreed upon structures, they are still uh, concepts and creations. Um, and it's how we perceive them, what we believe about them that keeps the shape of them and how we communicate within those structures. So now going into the sphere and within the sphere is, is a different type of communication and it's more fluid and it's like a feedback loop. And um, much like, you know, our, our whole body systems have continual feedback loops and there's this continual feedback in all these different areas and systems within our body at the energy level, at the uh, neuroendocrine level, um, in order to keep that equilibrium, that homeostasis, which is an ever-changing homeostasis, but it's, you know, it's, it creates a stability within that ever-changing, and that is taking me into the earth element. So from that traditional Chinese medicine perspective, um, the earth element is coming in for balancing. And so earth you know, it is, it can be looked upon as the vessel, right, that creates uh, stability in, uh, I've talked about this before, I'm sure in some, uh, you know, Chinese medicine, we're looking at the five elements, we're all often looking at them as like a cycle of five. But in other traditions, the earth is in the center. And so in this, this is the way 
I'm perceiving this right now is that the earth is your center and it's coming up as your center. Um, and it comes up very much um, as represented, say, by the middle uh, middle burner or middle heater. And we have the triple heater, three areas of, of the body that help to transform energy. And so what's coming up is that middle heater, which um, is associated with the earth element. And it is your sort of center of gravity and it helps to keep you stable in the process of that continual change. So there's this stabilizing effect, but then I'm going more deeply into this into um, the, the spleen organ and energy the, and its, its transformational qualities within your body. And so the spleen um, helps to extract the energy from food and the nourishment from food and transform that into energy that to travel through the rest of and provide nourishment and energy and chi, yin chi, I believe is the name, but also it also relates to wei chi, which is our protective uh, energy. So it also has a role in um, not only nourishment, but in immunity. Um, so it's that transformational quality that is coming in for balancing. Um, and uh, what this is connecting with is, um, is the Chinese clock. And so really what we're looking at here is the cycle of nourishment and energy um, provided by the earth element throughout your body through the Chinese clock. So the Chinese clock, each of the 12 organ meridians run through a two hour period throughout the 24 hour clock. And there is, you know, a really interesting correlation or mirroring when we're looking from that astrological perspective of the inner world and then the outer world. So the association with um, the sun's movement and the association with the meridian movement through that clock. So we are bringing in a balancing of this consciousness of nourishment and uh, stability in that transformational chi of the spleen and earth element to that whole consciousness shift throughout your entire meridian clock. Um, so, and this is really throughout the next 48 hours to run through and integrate that new awareness and help to shift blocks that are impeding you extracting the most from the food that you eat, but also from the experiences in your life, how you are receiving and digesting. I'm just going to sit with this for a moment. So um, this is uh, this is linking into your your heart and your heart's energy, um, and I'm going into a sub session on your heart and and the heart's role in awareness of nourishment. So one of the roles of your heart and your whole body mind is to um, bring awareness uh, to your whole being um, at all levels, body, mind, spirit, and emotion. And so I'm going into a subsession on helping this first balancing of that nourishment through your entire organ system and into a subsession on your heart's role within that. So in the fire element role within that. And so when I go into this subsession, there is a, an act of memory, um, an act of memory balancing that's coming up. Um, and so when we're talking about an act of memory um, from a body talk perspective, what we're looking at 
is that, um, you know, what during a particular time or a particular belief that we've hold, you know, it's arisen from an experience or a series of experiences that we haven't been able to actually process the emotions related to that experience. And so they remain a, a, a holding an emotional charge and that emotional charge then can inhibit, um, in this case, our nourishment um, uh, or, but whatever it is. So I'm just going to go into, I just need to tune into what, what that, that is. And so I'm just going to ask that you stay in your breath, whatever is comfortable for you and bringing yourself into your heart. And so it is, uh, this active memory is at the, at the physical level related to your relationship with food. And it, it's, um, and there's an emotion of not enough, like of, of not being able to get enough. And there's a fear in relation to that. And so it may relate to quantity, quantity. So, uh, you know, I'm not getting more specific on it, but I'm just thinking of like things that may influence this. So even as a, a young baby, maybe your mother had uh, challenges with breastfeeding, like, you know, who knows what the story is, but it's the emotional component that we want to actually start to shift on that and how that is impacting um, your, uh, your ability to really take in emotion. There's a, another aspect of this that's more at the sort of mind or belief level of uh, uh, worthiness. Uh, and so it's like not being worthy of this nourishment that also wants to be balanced. And, and when I go to that, I have this um, satellite coming in of your power chakra. So there's a quality of like, of not being able to receive the powerlessness of that um, and, and uh, related to even a confidence. Um, and this is not limited to a conscious, um, a conscious mind level. It's also subconscious mind in that it's like, you know, choices about what does nourish me and what does fulfill me. Um, and it's not all conscious. It's it's in, it's holistic and and um, subconscious mind being able to again be drawn to that what is what nourishing you. So going into that um, active memory synthesis of the emotional uh, triggers of that belief and experience in relation to food and self worth. And that's the end of the subsession on your heart. Um, and now I'm linking into uh, the pancreatic reflex point, which is also known as uh, the spleen 21 great low meridian. And I'm linking that to another meridian point. Um, it's a heart point. And these two points, um, very much. So it's like many of you know where the, the uh, spleen 21 is. It's just underneath, um, like four fingers down, just underneath um, your underarm area. And it may be a little bit tender. Well, the, the heart point that I'm is actually just underneath the front of your um, your underarm and we're focusing on the left-hand side. And so this is how we're going to tap it out. So these two points, again, coming from more of a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, um, can really help to shift blocks and energetic um, stagnation within that uh, whole process of extracting the the nourishment from your food. So we're going to tap this in um, through actually holding these two points. So if you just like to gently challenge those two points while taking deep breaths, and you can join me in tapping over your head. 
while taking deep breaths over your heart and over your belly. Four several breaths. And I'm just, uh, I need to keep tapping here for this one. Seems, uh, yep. So as I had mentioned um, that, really that whole formula is going to continue to cycle through for the next 48 hours. Um, and if you would like, I'm just checking on supporting that. You can on occasion, you know, just stop and address those two points um, on the left side while doing some gentle tapping over the next few days um, to support really opening and to more nourishment. Um, so when the, that energy is running through your organ systems through the Chinese clock, it's also then being able to actually get into your tissues and you know all the different areas of your body um, to really support more awareness of nourishment. Okay, so the 12th house is closing. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to um, see what's next. Okay. So the next thing that is coming in um, is uh, the, the wood element. Um, but more specifically into the wood element, into the liver. And the liver's a, a couple of functions, but the primary function here that's coming up is its quality of regeneration. So, you know, the liver is quite an amazing organ. I mean, I think our body is just filled with amazing organs. <laughs> Um, in, in their regenerative capacity. Um, so, you know, our Western science knows that the liver is able to uh, regenerate. And, um, and so within that regeneration, um, I'm going into a subsession. And the subsession is taking me into um, detoxification. Um, the liver's role in, in, it's like this whole, okay, so we just have to step back for a second here. So it's the regeneration of the liver and how that regeneration of the liver then supports many other functions in your body mind. Um, so at that uh, body mind level, the liver governs our organization, our ability to envision our future and plan with clarity um, and uh, you know and and hence the vision being clouded um, you know our liver's function and the, the physical level or sort of being toxic can actually impact our you know our thought processes right so um, I just have to make some notes here <clears throat> Okay, so so there's a few areas. It's the for this regeneration, and then the ability to support um, nourishment and healing of other parts of your body mind through supporting the liver and its regeneration. Um, the first priority is going into a body chemistry um, to toxins, but 
um, I'm going more into almost like a subsession on this. I'm not sure it has to do with, again, going into the earth quality um, of, it's like a macro, like how the earth itself, we have in a way polluted it. And so then how that um, macro level of pollution influences all of us. So it's a broader um, impact. It, it's like on our day to day basis, you know, we can make choices and all these things, but the broader impact of, you know, uh, things in the water system, like all, you know, I don't need to go into the details of all the things that are, that are, you know, so called toxic within our environment. So this is about helping to not only um, bring that toxic quality of helping your, your liver to physically detox, but also in the thinking and uh, perceptions that have created the conditions for creating a so-called, you know, toxic environment and helping to shift that to bring, again, more harmony um, with you in your environment. So the awareness, you know, when I think about that harmony, that awareness of I am not separate from my environment, my environment sustains me. And so fully, you know, more fully integrating that awareness and then how that can really shift toxic thinking and even, even judgments on others that are polluting. <clears throat> um, and emotions, pardon me, that are, um, that are toxic. So it's like coming from a number of different ways in this whole detoxification. Sorry, I really have a little tickle in my throat. Okay. And then, um, okay, so then going back into supporting this regeneration. So helping to balance the detoxification process, both mind and body and emotion, and then going into back into nourishment. And this takes me into a link into your, um, your gut microbiome and what's coming up in your gut microbiome is um, an activation of or like the natural consciousness expression of the archetype of the caregiver um, so it's looking at the microbiome within your gut uh, in its role as caring for you within of nurturing and nourishing you so this natural consciousness expression is to really activate and reset um, that, that natural role of nourishing and helping to clear out uh, pathologies that are not supporting that caregiving role, that nourishment and nurturing within your microbiome. Um, there's a, a satellite, it's um, a resource satellite on both this detoxification, um, liver balancing, linking into uh, the, the microbiome caregiver archetype balancing um, that is the hydration. It's a hydration, the hydration technique in body talk. So when we focused on hydration, it is um, to, you know, at the optimal level to actually, you know, help the functioning of all aspects of your, your body. And hydration also 
is the, um, it helps to move things. Like it's all about transportation. You think about, you know, all the rivers and the oceans, it's all water represents transportation and emotion and movement and communication. And so it's enhancing transportation um, for detoxification, enhancing transportation for nourishment, um, that fluidity, and also uh, more joy, because with nourishment, with being nourished and nurtured, um, is the peace and joy that comes with that. So hydration coming in to really support this liver and gut microbiome balancing. Okay, so um, there's another, I need to parcel this and then I'm, <clears throat> there's some kind of definition coming in here and the definition relates to Scorpio. Um, so Scorpio is um, the sign of the eighth astrological house. Um, it's ruled by Mars and Pluto. So in some ways, um, you know, Mars is sort of, um, is the warrior planet, can be divisive, but it can also be very energy driven. Um, and then Pluto is, is like the, you know, the more the evolved aspect of Mars. So it can still be very transformational and very direct energy. Um, so it's, it's those qualities that are coming in to define this in some way. And I'm just, uh, I just have to figure out what that is. So I'm just going to tap into that energy. Um, and again, it is, um, it's about transformation. Um, in relation to, um, In, in relation to your relationship with toxins, okay? So, um, let me just see if I can get more information on this. So, yes, um, when it's, it's, it's definitely about perspective. Um, you know, it's, toxins are bad <laughs> and even the label toxin as soon as we la label something toxic it means that it is bad for me it is dangerous it's you know there's a lot of emotions around toxins um and even metabolic toxins in a way it's like our you know that we even label it that way is an interesting thing right so what's a metabolic toxin a metabolic toxin is when um it's our body's byproduct of metabolism that it can build up in us and become not good for us. Um, but it's more about the emotional charge in being able to transform the awareness and emotional charge of the concept of toxins. So the stronger the emotion I have towards a concept, even if it's very fundamentally physically real, the more power, and this is it, that's it, Scorpio power. <laughs> I knew it would come. The more power that toxin has over me. So this is about really being able to actually start to shift and bring a new awareness to that relationship, which will then ultimately shift your relationship to your environment. So we're going to tap this whole um, last formula in. So the first item that came up was that detoxification, regeneration of your liver. So you can hold one hand over your liver and, um, and then deep breaths with this, please. So recapping on this last 
formula is helping your liver to um, regenerate by balancing not only the physical aspects of toxins and detoxification, but also perspectives on detoxification and toxins. Um, and then also back into um, nourishment and going into this whole balancing of the uh, natural consciousness of your microbiome to provide you with nurturing and nourishment and supporting the first formula of being able to bring in that which nourishes you and support the flow of that nourishment throughout your whole body mind. So that was um, quite an earthy, <laughs> earthy, um, it's been an earthy theme in the sense of very supportive um, at, at that, you know, very physical um, and, um, and soul level. So I'm just going to see um, and ask if there's uh, anything else that... Uh, So that is um, our New Year's session. Um, so I thank everyone for joining me for this, um, this really nourishing, um, wonderful way to start uh, the new year in opening to receive more um, in, in that and then really helping to harmonize and bring that center point into awareness that, you know, your gravitational center of earth into um, a better balancing. Yeah, happy new year. I'm glad that this resonated with you. Thank you, Luba. Yeah, and wishing everyone a, a great week. And I think there's a, a, another moon session coming up and I think it's this Thursday and I think it's going to be in cancer. So, um, I'm, I'm just going to try to stay consistent. If I can't, I will definitely let you know, but, uh, if, if we can do the session this Thursday, then I hope you can join me and, um, happy new year and many blessings to everyone. Thank you so much.